Leland, government forces in Ukraine recapturing a key stronghold of pro-Russian separatists, capping a major offensive wrestling more than a dozen towns from rebels in the eastern part of the country. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin has reportedly massed about 40,000 troops near the Ukrainian border. So what's next in the crisis? Retired Navy Captain Bob Wells, former National Security Advisor to Vice President Dick Cheney, joins us now. Good to see you. Good to see you, Arthel. So does this mean that the political tide seems to be turning in Ukraine's favor? Uh, first of all, it's important to realize that uh, this is indeed uh, a very uh, good, good victory for uh, uh, the new administration of uh, uh, the Ukrainian president, Poroshenko. And looking at uh, the importance of Slo uh, Slovyansk and uh, what it meant to the rebel forces, you have to look at this tactically, operationally, and geopolitically. I think tactically and operationally, it's, a, it's an important victory for uh, Ukraine and the new government. I think geopolitically, though, as you just mentioned, Vladimir Putin still has uh, quite a few cards to play, uh, quite a bit of intimidation to do to shape uh, the political outcome inside Ukraine. And it's not like Putin's just going to say, OK, I'm going to walk away from the chessboard. He's going to assess what's happening, back away momentarily, even if then, and then come back with a vengeance. What, do you agree with that assessment? I do. I think he's got uh, quite a few political tools. He's looking at diplomatically the uh, engagement still with the, uh, the Germans and the French. Uh, uh, the foreign minister, Lavrov, just met with his counterparts uh, in Berlin. Uh, he's also got the United States. Interesting enough, uh, Mr. Putin uh, called uh, President Obama yesterday to wish the United States uh, a happy birthday on our 4th of July celebration. But he's really looking at uh, still wait, his wait, overall... Wait a minute. What's behind that? I just feel like every time there's some, something like that that seems to be a nice uh, extension of um, camaraderie or niceties, it seems like, okay, what's coming after that? What's coming after that is, is the continued importance for Vladimir Putin and Russia to basically be seen as a geopolitical power, that it's the ascendance of the Russian uh, interests geopolitically. Uh, as you recall, uh, Mr. Putin said that the end of the Cold War was a very tragic uh, circumstance for the, for the Russian Federation, for the Soviet Union, how it ended. Uh, there are quite a few uh, Russian uh, per, per people that are uh, dispersed uh, uh, across the former Soviet Union that uh, still uh, look to Moscow for uh, leadership, that have an affinity uh, for the Russian culture and for the, re the message of Vladimir Putin of Russian nationalism. So he's looking at uh, using Russian nationalism, looking at the bigger picture of elevating the Russian uh, position in the world geopolitically. And uh, Ukraine is, is the chessboard, as you mentioned. Crimea was uh, the first uh, knight. Uh, if you will, in the chess move. And the operational theater in eastern Ukraine, Donetsk, Luhansk province, uh, are key uh, pieces uh, on the chessboard. And when you talk about Putin, you know, overseeing this whole operation, um, how have these sanctions against uh, Russia, the U.S. and European sanctions, worked thus far? And, and, and should there be more aggressive sanctions put in place? They've actually uh, caused an effect, uh, which is very helpful uh, for the United States as well as for the Europeans. They've caused uh, Mr. Putin to pause and, and do a risk-benefit uh, analysis with regard to next steps. Uh, I do think that uh, more severe sanctions could be in the often, offing. He's looking at uh, the other implications of, of moves. It's, uh, it's very calculated. He's also got a new uh, Russian-Ukrainian uh, relationship now with the new government of Mr. Poroshenko and, and looking at uh, what uh, Ukraine intends to do. As you recall, they just had a, uh, a truce called where the rebels and the Ukrainian government were trying to uh, uh, meet at the table in Minsk. Uh, those things fell through with regard to the, the lack of... Uh, cooperation from the rebel uh, forces, making uh, Ukraine take matters into but, their own hands. So, But you mentioned that Poroshenko seems to have a, a relationship with Putin, but it's not like he's just uh, all trusting of this guy, because as you know, uh, Poroshenko, he appointed his third defense minister since uh, Yanukovych was ousted. So he's definitely making sure that he's bolstered, his army is bolstered. Yes, that's a very important development as well. It's a, a stronger chain of command. Uh, they've actually got an operational plan or at least a roadmap looking at what they're going to do in Donetsk uh, province. Also, Mr. Poroshenko has got a relationship with uh, Angela Merkel and also President Hollande in, uh, in, France. in France. Yeah. And uh, that, it, that is important diplomacy that continues to basically uh, shape uh, the relationship with Ukraine and Russia. 
uh, that needs to be taken into consideration. But Mr. Putin, getting back to Mr. Putin and, and the border, and uh, he started this uh, with regard to what's happening inside Ukraine. He looked at uh, what was to be achieved with his uh, efforts in Crimea, and, uh, and the next steps uh, are really uh, in Moscow and also yeah. in Kiev. Captain? I appreciate your, your, your expertise. I do have to go. I'd like to keep talking to you, though, but i got to go. Captain Buckwell, thank you so much. Thank you, Arthur. Uh -huh.